big waste. Just a big waste. Well, the fall brought in a spike in spending in Washington, D.C. As Fox 17's Erica Curry shows us, some say federal agencies wasted your money on artwork or LED TVs. A big waste. Just a big waste. It's a tough pill to swallow as a taxpayer, knowing our hard-earned money is given to the federal government for purchases like this. $1.8 million for artwork for the VA, that, that's unexcusable. The IRS, the agency that collects this money from you, blew more than $2.4 million on toner products at once. All of this happened in the last few weeks leading up to September 30th. That's the end of these agencies' fiscal year, and if they don't spend their entire budget before the year is over, they risk a cut by Congress the following fiscal year. And when you're spending 25 percent of your budget so aggressively, you, at some point you're just looking for ways to spend it. And that, that in, in itself is going to breed waste. Among the wasteful spending, the Department of Homeland Security spent more than $15,000 to buy two pianos. The Department of State racked up a $100,000 boost tab just in the month of September, and it's hard to justify spending like that. There's some room for some discretionary spending, but not reckless spending. Americans for Prosperity of Tennessee, which advocates for less taxes and more economic freedom, says this use it or lose it policy in Washington does the exact opposite and instead encourages government to grow. And that, that's hurting us because we're the taxpayers. We deserve to get those dollars back and the government should, should spend dollars more responsibly. Erica Curry, Fox 17 News. The old Tennessee state prison out in West Nashville hasn't had any prisoners in it since it was shut down back in 1992. Over the past two decades, it has been used to make some movies and music videos, and recently a group of businessmen expressed interest in buying the property from the state, but say the state won't name its price. All the while, you, the taxpayer, continue to pay for maintenance and security. Once home to some of Tennessee's most notorious inmates, the old Tennessee State Prison has seen better days. The castle, as many locals call it, is literally falling apart. But this is what most of the buildings look like. Last summer, Tom Baldridge and his business partners were granted rare access inside the prison. They documented the damage and estimated the cost of repairs to turn the old penal institution into an entertainment, technology, and education campus they call Pantheon Park. The cell blocks would make great scoring stage studios or, or sound stage studios or even studios to do live TV broadcasts like Austin City Limits. Baldridge and his partners want the high ceilings and acreage to attract film and post-production work now being done mostly in New York and L.A. Award-winning sound engineer Bill Vorndick says this project would add depth to Nashville's pool of technical talent. So if there's only one set of people that can work on a, a TV set or a movie set at a time, if someone else is you know, doing a movie at the same time, Nashville doesn't have the, the talent to handle it. The men behind Pantheon Park offered the state $5 million for the property. We did that. We brought it at the appraised price plus 10 percent, and we've never had an answer. And this could be the reason. The State Department of Correction for more than five years has been talking about moving its administrative offices here. The problem is there's been no money to do it. And with tax collections more than $170 million under projections, watchdog groups say the state is doing taxpayers a disservice by ignoring this offer. Clearly sitting there empty, doing nothing, no tax revenue, no economic development, no jobs, that is the worst possible way for it to be, uh, for this situation to be resolved. Now, the state of Tennessee did issue a statement saying the discussions about relocating its central operations are ongoing, but there is no definite date for any possible move. That's what I work for, and you'll be able to do stuff like this. While the federal government continues to spend billions of dollars to fix the Obamacare website, Fox 17's Erica Curry is on the Waste Watch tonight tracking the money. And it said that we would no longer have them verify their income, the applicant, but they could just uh, self-attest, um, in other words, using the honesty system. Congressman Diane Black says it's in the writing of the law. One of the two major qualifications for the Affordable Care Act had its verification waived last summer. There's no way for Health and Human Services to check applications against IRS income data before giving away taxpayer subsidies to those who apply. It's a shame. It's really a shame. 
Terry Bossa is touring downtown Nashville from Louisiana. Traveling is how she and her husband would rather have their money spent. That's what I work for to you know, be able to do stuff like this. So I don't, I don't expect a handout. Knowing their money is being given away by the federal government to some who don't even qualify seems unfair to them. There are 1.2 million applicants who are currently receiving those taxpayer subsidies where there is a discrepancy in their income. The Wall Street Journal compared potential IRS audits later by the Health and Human Services for these subsidies to earned income tax credits, which the Treasury Inspector General estimates as many as 25 percent go to those not qualified. Using this rate of fraud, Obamacare subsidies could add up to an estimated $25 billion per year to the wrong people. Multiply that by the 10-year budget window that Congress uses is a $250 billion waste. In addition to that, we're getting ready for a whole new wave of signups. Erica Curry, Fox 17 News. Fox 17 wants to hold government leaders accountable. And if you see government waste, we want to hear from you. Drop us a line at fox17.com. Click on the Waste Watch tab. Millions of taxpayer dollars spent on something called pickleball. Why some say the government is overspending. A penny made is not a penny earned. The real cost of pocket change.